How's it going? Fox here for Sound Design Tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use different breakbeats to spice up your drum and bass drums. It's a technique that a lot, if not all, of the big drum and bass producers use. Uh, to start with I'm just going to create a basic kick, snare and uh, hi-hat loop with a drum rack within Ableton. And then I'm going to show you how I go about uh, layering a couple of different breaks, EQing them so they fit nicely with the rest of the drums to uh, fill out the rest of the drum loop. So yeah, without no further ado, we'll get down to it. So, I say I've created a MIDI channel here. I'm going to go ahead and load an instance of drum rack onto it. I'm just going to go and find a kick, a, hat, a basic closed hi-hat and a snare. So I've got my own drum and bass sample library. If you haven't got your own one, I'm sure by now, if you're looking at this, you're going to be building up your own sample libraries. This is just what I've put together over the years. So yeah, we'll go ahead and find a kick to start with. Some of a nice bit of punch. That is a nice one. I'll load this onto C1. I want a snare now. That'll do nicely. Power snare. Now just a closed hi hat. Something with a nice snappy attack, not not too much of a reverb tail I like. That's it, that's fine. Load that onto E1. So yeah, I'll go ahead and just make a quick 8 bar MIDI click. Control Shift M on the region that you highlighted. So I always put the snare in first, it gives me something to go by. So nothing too complicated so far. You can pretty much do your kick, your kick wherever you want it. Uh, with all the neuro funk stuff now, the kicks are going crazy and going all over the place. But so I'll just keep this real simple for today, just to show you, show you what you can do with the breaks afterwards. So yeah, I'll just do a simple hat and fill now as well. So yeah, there you have it, nice, simple kick, hat and a snare, drum and, drum and bass loop. So I haven't done no EQ and I don't want to go into any of that today, I just want to show you now how you can use some breaks just to fill out the sound. So yeah, as I said earlier, I've built up quite a library of stuff over the years. I've got a breaks folder with pretty much every break you could ever want. So I'll just cycle through a few and find one that I want. I'll be fine. Big break. I'll drag it over. Double click on it. Checks all the transients. Uh, Ableton does a pretty good job of sorting everything out for you. As you can see, all the transients for this are bang on the money where they want to be. That's it. Duplicate it over. I normally do a little fill at the end just to change it around. So you can highlight this section. Control E splits it so this is now on its own. Just reverse this last little bit, just to add a bit of, of fill at the end. It's probably too much. We'll drag this one out so it's just the last two beats.
I normally do a bit of EQing on the brakes just to get rid of the low end because we've already got the kick that we want, so put an EQ8 on. Sometimes you can accentuate the points that you want with an EQ as well if you want the snare to cut through. I'm going to boost the hats on this slightly. I'll pan this one to the right. 15, 16, 17, so I'm going to use another one now as well, just to thicken it out even more. So, same thing, just going through my brakes. See if I can find another one that I think is going to sit well. Let's go for peas, maybe. Floyd. We'll go for that one, it's got a nice symbol running through it, something a bit different, so drag it over, double click it again. See this one's slightly off in places, I normally just pick, double click the main transient points you want to move over, and then just sort it out manually. People do it different ways, but I find this a lot quicker. Sometimes if the hats run off a bit, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, it helps you give it sort of more of that human feel. Try and highlight the highlight the snare on this one. Just the two breaks. Now I think we to lose as well. Try and double up some of these hats at the end again just to give it a bit of variation. If we zoom in. Just a little hat fill at the end there, gives it a bit of variation towards the end of the eight bars. See, I would now always group these together. Now I've got it done. Shift, down, down, control G, control R. I call this drums. For my drums, <laughs> most of the time I use a glue compressor with an Ableton. It does a real good job. But say, for today I'll use that, because you might not have the plugins that I've got. Right, real quick attack, quite a slow release, keep the ratio over 4 over 1. Boost the kick volume. There you have it. I'm saying a real simple way of uh, beefing up your drum loops with uh, layering brakes on it. Let's say sometimes I'll just chop tiny little bits out of brakes that I want. Let's see if we can find one with a bongo in. I'll show you how you can chop it around to what you want. There we go. Let's create another audio track. We'll just use that little triple bit there, I'll say I'll EQ it again, just to get rid of any of the low ends. Go 
consolidate it. And uh, when you consolidate an audio clip in Ableton, you've got these options down here. Real simple. This one divides it by two, which makes it twice as fast. This one doubles it, so it's twice as slow. So if you divide it by two... It's then giving us quite a little quick uh, bongo. Down just to just to the two. Fade it off slightly. See what it sounds like all the way through. So I'll probably lower the volume of in, e intermittent ones to give it a bit of uh, swing. Duplicate it back through. Just have it running underneath. There's another layer, so the possibility is endless with these breaks. Sometimes I make all my drum and bass, my whole drum and bass drums, just out of breaks, just chopped up, like finding the kick that I want, chopping the kick out. But yeah, endless world of fun. So you can pitch this, pitch this section up, maybe two or three semitones, so it sounds a bit different towards the end of the loop. So endless world of possibilities. I'll just chuck uh, an instance of Massive on it and just put a bass line behind it just because I can. And this has been quite a quick one. And I right. Massive. <coughs> just draw a MIDI clip in it quick. I always tend to use A. drum and bass patches that I made. I might do a tutorial for this one in another another video. Quite a simple patch really but works well. Just load another instance a massive quick just a layer of a base on top of it, another one of my patches. Just use one of these. Choose a, like a sequence one that I've made.
Well, there you go. I'm just messing around now, yeah. So the main point for this tutorial was to show you how you can use brakes to uh, spice up your drum loops. So, yeah, there it is. Real straightforward. Nothing to it inside Ableton. The, the sample window in Ableton helps you, when you double-click on a sample, this little box here lets you pretty much do anything you want. You can transpose it, reverse it, as I say. Do anything you want with it. It's brilliant. But, yeah, that's it anyway for this tutorial. I'll do another tutorial about that driven drum and bass patch. So I do really like this one. Nice throbbing drum and bass bass, that is. So real straightforward. Only two oscillators, a pulse and a scrapyard. But yeah, for now, as always, make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It really does help me to uh, do more. Our Facebook and Google Plus pages is Sound Design Tutorials. Thanks again. Cheers.